Dude, this is crazy. So you just bought yourself a new sample pack and you're excited to make something out of it. But there's that one folder that has 1,000, if not 2,000 percussion one shots. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take those one shots and actually make something out of them. Let's dive in. So as we usually do, we're gonna start completely from scratch. And let's say I just bought a sample pack from Lotus Tunes. And we have a folder, drums, one shots, percussion. And in this case, it's categorized into two folders, one with high percussion, one with low. We're just gonna, let's say, drag a single one shot into a MIDI layer. So I have a MIDI track loaded up in here. Create those hitting Control Shift T. See, another one created here. It's gonna take that load that up in here and you can see we have our basic little simpler and for this to work we're gonna have to right click convert this simpler to a sampler so this gives us a bit more functions at the top as you can see here now we're just gonna open up that zone and then we get this panel over here this is where we get to drag in other sounds i'm just gonna go through the sounds that i really like and just find the ones that sound interesting to me and just drag them into this panel here oh this one's cool interesting Interesting. Sure, why not? And just put them into this little panel. Right after we've done that, we're going to hit the selector knob over here. Right click, distribute ranges equally. Awesome. So now we can group this, select this little sampler, hit Control or Command G, and open up this little selector. I don't know, how do you call this actually? I think this is, yeah, show hide chain list. So we're going to open that up here. And now what we're going to do is practically the same but for the low percussions. So the ones that I think are interesting, I'm just gonna drag them in here. Let's actually call this one high and this one low. So for this one, again, right click, simpler to sampler, zone, selector. Now we're just gonna drag in a few sounds that are interesting. Nice, nice, nice. We're gonna right click distribute ranges equally. After we've done that, we can open up the macro panel over here and we are going to now map this little slider from both high and low to macro one and two. Let's take the high percussion first, move into selector, right click, map to macro one. And now we see sample selector here, call this high select. So now we select the chain two, which is the low percussion, select our little slider here. Right click, map to macro two. Now we're gonna call this low select. So now, whenever we hit a note within this instrument rack, we get a layer between the high sound and the low sound. And we can now select our favorite sound. Do that for the high layer and the low layer. Really cool. And what I like about this technique is that it allows you to select all your sounds. Now we're gonna go into filter global. So remember, we're still on the low percussions tab and I'm gonna map the sustain to macro, let's say four. So this is gonna be low sustain, sus. <laughs> and we're gonna do the same for high. So click on high, select all of our samples. Make sure we're in filter global, sustain, map to macro three. So we're gonna call this high sustain. Let's give it an according color. So let's make these red perhaps, and these ones yellow. And now we can change the length of the sound. So let's play. And what's coolest is that it applies it to every single sample that's within this little chain. So if I want the lower layer to be longer, I can just turn up the sustain here. And if I want the high layer to just be a short click, I can turn it down here. Or I could do it the other way around. Select a different high layer. Sounds pretty cool, right? But how do we use this in the context of a full track? Let me show you that. So I'm gonna hide the chain as a matter of fact now. And what I'd like to do for the sake of demonstration is load up a kick. So let's set our BPM to, let's say 120 and go through X folder here. I like this one, load that up here. And let us now double click to create a MIDI clip, right click fourth and create a simple fourth to the floor groove. Take the section, hit command L to loop it up. There we go. Maybe reduce the volume a bit here and just cut out that bass so we can focus on the perks. Again, double click the percussion layer. So let's call this one perk and let's give it a noticeable color. So let's do it like this. And now I can, in accordance to the kick, draw in some percussions. And I would always take this eighth bar mode first and place the perks between the kicks. So like this. 
and then take a 16th and maybe squeeze in a few different sounds here. This changes the pitch. Maybe not that much, maybe like this. Something like that. And we can pitch him down a few semitones here, duplicate this towards the end of our loop like that. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna copy this, paste it, and perhaps add in a bit of rhythmic variation. Select all, randomize, so it randomizes the velocity. So each sound has a different velocity or strength. And then I can take the first half, if I really like it, and duplicate that towards the end as well. There we go. So it still sounds quite random. You can go through the individual layers like this. Shape my sound here. Or what I can also do is load up an LFO. And this is where it gets really interesting, as you can load up the LFO right after the rack. Hit map, map to your high select. Open up this panel here, hit map, map that to low select, map it to, let's say, the sustain as well, and map it to the sustain of the low as well. So, how freaking trippy is that? <laughs> now we can also change the rate, change the form. Let's say we don't want a groove that is this fast, so we can delete, right click eighth bars. Let's go with something really, really, really simple now. Maybe like this, 16th. Cool. And notice how the LFO is changing the notes each time they hit. So I'm gonna hit randomize again, so it randomizes the velocity. Awesome, take this, duplicate that towards the end again. I hope it's on grid. No, it's not, now it's on grid, there we go. To make the drum groove a bit more full, I would like to add in some maybe full groove, like this, dial it down a bit. Maybe take something else. Maybe add some toms, like this. To finalize it, I would say we can also create a new audio track like this. Hit resampling. So everything that comes from the perks channel is being routed into here. Another way to do it is not by hitting resampling, but actually selecting the perks channel. So what we're gonna do is select perk, hit record input, post mixer. Now we could record the percussion to this layer here. So there's always a different groove that is generated, which is so cool for workflow. Really, really cool. You got your own groove, dude. You have your own little groove here. And it always sounds different. So you can take each and every little snippet like this and maybe replace it like this. Take this guy here maybe and put it like this. And let's say you wanna create a new track we could disable this one first, create a new audio layer. Again, hit percussion, post mixer, record input. And we could do another take. We can change the rate on the LFO or the depth, the offset. Of course, whatever the LFO is doing, we could do manually as well with automation, but LFO just makes it a bit easier. What I would like to do now is actually add in some type of effect. We can get really creative here. We can add a grain delay. Audio effects, delay loop, grain delay. Let's add that right after the rack here. And now let's hear how this sounds. Whoa, loop it. Dude, this is crazy. Right, that is awesome. And again, I'm just gonna hit record input and record that here. Awesome. So we have another percussion loop generated here. And let's say I wanna create another loop. I'm gonna hit an audio track here. For now, change the settings again. So I'm just gonna mess around with the parameters here. Just create something really, really off, just to show you that it works in any case. And we're gonna hit square. Maybe square works, let's see. Turn off the grain delay. Square might be a bit too harsh. Let's go for sign. And now add in a grain delay again. It's 
so fun to mess around with these guys here. Now let's solo this. Percussion, record. Take this section and loop it up. Now we can disable the original layer and maybe take all of these three layers and add them into a group. And now we're gonna play these. Gonna do a bit of rough mixing, reduce the volume on certain layers like this. And I might as well just compress these layers. And what compression does is it just basically, as the name already implies, glues them together. I usually take the glue compressor because it sounds a bit cooler. <laughs> Just takes those high peaks and squashes it down a bit so it sounds a bit more unified. Like they're playing together, like it's a percussion ensemble. Let's add some saturation. This also glues it a bit more. And let's say from this point on, we want to move on to the melodic part of the track. So in this case, I'd like to create a new MIDI track and load up Diva. By the way, guys, I have a new preset pack coming out very soon. So stay tuned. It's called Synthesia. I'm going to take an arpeggio like this one, always moving, or maybe this one. I like this one a lot. And we're just going to try and play in some cool chords. Let's just give it a quick little play. I like that. So let's try and draw in some notes here. Let's stick with the scale of E minor. Duplicate that here. Maybe switch out the ARP. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching. That's it for this video. You can grab this project on my Patreon page and the sample packs on my website. So feel free to do so. See you in the next video. Cheers.